flipped classroom video for Maths A2 Unit 3, Parametric Equations. So, what are parametric equations? Well, first of all, we have to think about what a parameter is. And parametric functions are functions where x and y are defined in terms of a parameter. So, in this sense, then a parameter is a another variable which determines what's happening with our main variables, if you like, which are x and y. Very often, not always, but very often the parameter is time. So we might, for example, have a situation where x is defined as f of t and y is defined as g of t. So f and g are separate functions. One of them gives us our y value and one of them gives us our x value. Um, and so the values of x and y vary as the parameter, which is t, varies. So we'll have a look at an example. And a good example is the motion of an object under gravity. And depending on the initial velocity of an object, uh, as an example, we could have this situation where our x value is equal to 147 times t, and our y value is 196t minus 4.9t squared. Now, that looks um, a bit horrible, but it's only the numbers that are horrible. Basically, we have a um, what would be a straight line uh, for the x coordinate and what would be a quadratic for the y coordinate. Um, but of course, this is being defined in terms of t. So when we graph it, the first equation will just show us where x is and the second one will show us where y is. And it's, it's instructive to have a look at the motion of the object, because this is a model for the motion of an object under gravity, of course. So we're going to look at the motion of the object in the x and the y directions. And what you'll notice is that along the bottom, so that's the motion in the x direction, the blob that represents the motion of the object will go steadily along the bottom, whereas the blob going up, which obviously is the y direction, will be going slower and slower till it stops and then coming back down faster and faster, which is what we'd expect. So have a look at this little clip. OK, and we can connect those two motions together, and that will show us the motion of the object itself. So we can see the green dot is the object now, and both the y and the x motion is represented. And then finally, we can see the motion of this object traced out. And what we can see is it's moving and showing us a parabola, which you may not, you may know, you may not know, but now you know that if you project an object under gravity, then it gives us a parabola. That is simplifying the situation, but it's a good approximation anyway. So that's an example of a parametric function. Um, you can imagine that we might sometimes want to convert between parametric and Cartesian equations. Cartesian means the uh, familiar x, y type equations, uh, or y because a function of x more usually uh, in your studies so far. Um, but if we do do this, we need to be careful in how we think about how our variables are actually connected. So we'll have a look at using the previous example we have x is 147t and y is 196t take away 4.9t squared. Now, we can create, for these this pair of parametric equations, we can create an equation in x and y by eliminating t. And um, if we label those as 1 and 2, we can see from equation 1 that if we divide 3 by 147, t is equal to x divided by 147. Now we can put that... Uh, expression for t into equation 2, which will give us y equals 196 times t, which we replace by x over 147, take away 4.9 times t squared, and again we replace the t by x over 147, so we have x over 147 squared. 
we can tidy that up and we end up with 4x over 3 take away x squared over 4410 which is a funny looking equation but essentially it's a quadratic. Now what this has told us is that x and y are related in this way but actually each of them is separately dependent on t and as I mentioned we've got a quadratic formula here a quadratic formula gives us a parabola and so we would expect this to come out of representing the path of a projectile so we're not surprised by this but there we are so that's how we managed to get a Cartesian equation by eliminating our parameter. Now we may find advantages in converting the other way or using um, a Cartesian or actually even an implicit equation might be better represented by a parametric equation. So we're going to have a look at the example of a, the equation of a circle so we've got x squared plus y squared is r squared, the familiar equation of a circle. And if we think about cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, or better to say cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, then we can parameterize this equation using these trigonometric functions. So if we times what we already have uh, with the cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 by r squared, that gives us r squared cos squared p, uh, x in this case, sorry I swapped it to x, plus r squared sine squared x equals r squared. We can then put brackets on those terms on the left hand side so we have r cos theta squared plus r sine theta squared equals r squared and that allows us to say well therefore we will parameterize this by saying we let x equals r cos theta and we let y equal r sine theta. So, we might be able to see um, that any point given by this parametric equation will be a distance of r from zero. Um, and that means that if we collect all the points that are a distance r from zero, they're going to give us a circle. So, if we look at the diagram here, we can see that we have a, uh, a triangle there with r cos theta for our x and r sine theta for our y. But of course by Pythagoras, if we do r cos theta all squared plus r sine theta all squared, we will end up with r squared times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, and that is 1. So we'll end up with r squared, which for Pythagoras we then square root to give us our distance r. And you've probably seen this diagram when looking at trigonometry previously anyway, so this may well be a familiar sort of diagram. Um, and in fact if we vary theta from 0 to 2 pi using radians or 0 to 360 if you were using degrees then that will trace out a full circle now that would be difficult to do using x and y values um, because we'd have to be using them twice when they're positive and when they're negative so it's much nicer to be able to do it with a parametric form so you can see the angle increasing from naught through pi when it gets around there and then 2 pi when it gets back to the beginning. Okay, something we might want to be able to do is to see how a line and a parametric curve intersect. So here's an example. Find the points of intersection of the parametric curve given by x equals 4t squared and y equals 8t and the line y equals 2x minus 16. So in order to do this the first step is to substitute the parametric versions of x and y into the line equation and see what we get and we'll tidy it up as well of course. So we have y equals 2x minus 16 so y we replace by its parametric equation which is 8t that will be 2 times the x uh, parameter, which is 4t squared, so that's 2 times 4t squared, and then minus 16. And then we can multiply that out and rearrange, so we have 
um, the t squared term, 8t squared, we're subtracting 8t, so that gives us minus 8t minus 16, and that will be equal to naught. So we've just rearranged the line above, and we've done it in that way because we can see we have a nice quadratic equation. And then we'll divide by 8, which probably most of you would, would have been able to do in one go, but never mind, there we are. So t squared minus t minus 2 equals naught. Step 2, solve that equation. Well, that's deliberately a nice and easy quadratic equation to solve, so we can factorise to t minus 2 times t plus 1 equals naught, and that means we have t equals 2, or t equals minus 1. So what that means is we have the parameters for the points that are common to our initial curve and to the line, because we've put the parameterized versions of x and y into the line, so these values of t satisfy both. So step three is we can now substitute these values of t back into the parametric versions of x and y to find the intersection points. So first of all, if we put t into the x function of t, we get 4 times t squared, so that's 16, and for y we get 8 times the t being 2, so that's 8 times 2 is also 16, and that gives us the point 16, 16. If we put minus 1 into the x uh, function of t, we have 4 times minus 1 squared, minus 1 squared is just 1, so that leaves us with 4, and we have y equals 8 times minus 1, which is minus 8. So that gives us the point 4 minus 8. Now, we now know that these are definitely points on the parametric curve, but if we were doing this in a, an important situation, like, say, an exam or something, we might want to check our answers. And we need these also to be on the line, because we're wanting points that are the points of intersection of the curve with the line. So we've now got two points in xy form, so we can check them back into the y equals 2x minus 16. So what we do is we put the x value into 2x minus 16, so for the point 16 comma 16, we've got an x value of 16, pop that in, 2 times 16, take away 16, is indeed 16, which is the y value we want. And if we do the same thing with the 4 from the second point we found, then we have 2 times 4 minus 16, which is 8 minus 16, which is minus 8, and that also is what we got before. So that means we've checked the points and we're happy with them. And in fact, we can graph that, and there we are. We can see our curve, which is the parametric curve, 4t squared for x and 8t for y, and then we have our line which is 2x minus 16, and we can see where the intersections are.